Howdy! It's Tubal Cain once again, and this is episode number 21 of my series entitled What Makes It Work, and specifically this is What Makes a Carbide Lamp Work. And I've got several of these to show you, so let's get started. Several months ago, this carbide lamp was given to me by uh, a man by the name of uh, uh, Mike Campbell out of Kentucky and he said that it was used in a mine there originally so I'm taking his word for that and uh, we had many of these when we were boys we used to explore the old limestone uh, caves actually they were mines not not caves but uh, this one was sent to me I cleaned it up a bit I hope I can get it to work I haven't tried yet but you're gonna see uh, several things about this uh, number one is that the gasket was was ruined it's real stiff you see it's breaking apart and I made a new one right here, so we'll see if that works. But these were designed to clip onto a miner's cap. These were also used by cave explorers and coon hunters and so on. But we just hand held them when we were kids. The carbide goes down in the lower part here. Water goes in the top. And the flame comes out right here. And there's a reflector, a parabolic reflector. But you can see that this has been dropped so many times and it's crushed. So the, the shape of the reflector here is, is pretty much destroyed. This is the flint striker. And I, I tried to repair this, but the wheel is pretty well worn out. And it does not take standard Zippo type flints, nor does it take welder's flints. So I just gave up on that, and I'm going to light it a, another way. But they were, they were self-lighting, and this little... Uh, uh, lever here controls the amount of water that drops in. You can see there's an on and I guess an off button here. This particular one was made by let's see what does it say there? Guy's Dropper. I don't know if that's the maker or what. No, there's the maker. Universal Lamp Company. Springfield, Illinois. Oh, just Lincoln's home. 120 miles from me. All brass except for the reflector here. I'm going to show you several other kinds before I attempt to start this, but let me talk about carbide first. I think sometimes we use the word carbide incorrectly, and this is a tungsten carbide uh, cutter. You've seen me open these before. So that's tungsten carbide, not to be confused with the abrasive that we call silicon carbide. It's usually a black abrasive. It can be used on paper and cloth or uh, solid wheels. But what we're specifically talking about for this uh, uh, video is uh, carbide that is called, uh, actually it's calcium carbide, but as boys we always called it simply carbide. And this is for use in carbide lamps. And when we were boys, you could buy these in any hardware store for about two bucks. And then a full pound can of a Union carbide, uh, calcium carbide. And we would just put a wad of that in our pockets. And then the water was available either from our canteens or water dripping in the, uh, in the caverns where we went all the time. So we had uh, great use for these and a lot of fun with these when we were kids. And I did go coon hunting one time with one of these, but the other guys had uh, more powerful flashlights of that era, late 50s, you know, that were really were better than this, but these are pretty neat if you've never seen one. I purchased this over the internet, it just seemed like the other day, but it's already 2009. I used to take this to the high school and show the kids, because of course what we're producing with uh, the carbide is uh, acetylene gas. Now this one, which I used to take down to the high school, is, is totally turned to powder, because even the most minute amounts of moisture in there uh, degrade it. Even though I kept this airtight clothes and in a, a Ziploc bag, but this is what it's supposed to look like, and all this is deteriorating as well because the, the pebbles of carbide should be a little more black than this, and it has quite an odor to it, which instantly brings me back 
to my boyhood. You know how odors are uh, in the brain. That's it's one of the parts of the brain that is more instantly affected than anything else. And odor can, well, you guys know what I'm talking about. I hope you do because there's so many pleasures in uh, with odors and uh, bouquets and, and and so on. So I know I'm talking a little bit too much. But uh, I just wanted you to know about carbide. You can still get it over the internet, eBay. Uh, I don't know where else you can get it. If you go to the hardware store, they will uh, look at you quizzically when you ask for calcium carbide. They will be clueless. However, you can only buy this in very small quantities because of the hysteria of the postal department. And, uh, you know, the, I suppose something bad can be done with this. So that's why there's all the restrictions on shipping of it. This is, of course, nothing more than a little carbide generator. And I had the neatest one that a guy gave me. It was about the size of a five-gallon bucket. And it came from the German Army, and it was marked 1944. And it was used, uh, I suppose, out in the field to repair tanks or whatever they had to do. And it produced the, uh, the acetylene along with the tank of oxygen that they had to carry with them. Unfortunately, I left it at the school along with a lot of other things when I retired. I went back there to retrieve it just uh, six months ago and of course it, it got thrown out but I thought that was so neat it was all in German. All right I know I'm chattering a bit too much we got water here and here's some carbide and when I drop the carbide uh, into the water of course it's instantly going to produce uh, bubbling and carbide uh, acetylene gas and there it is and I, I will light it. A lot of carbon coming off of there and it makes a mess in the house. I can relight that now, of course. Instantly takes the hair off your knuckles, but that's the price of fun. And we used to do a lot of diabolical things with this when we were kids. I'm not even going to talk about that. And it will quickly, quickly deplete. I'm going to put some of the powder in there and see if there's any potency left to that. There's nothing left but powder in here, but let's see what happens with this older. You see, it's, it's still producing, but it is, isn't something I would want to use in the lamp. Or put in my pocket. Pretty awesome, huh? Let me know if you've never heard of this, but it was just so common when we were boys. Now, as you know, I always have more than one of everything, but here's a more modern uh, carbide lamp. Uh, it says, for a brilliant beam from carbide and water with polished reflector and lighter attachment. And, and here it is, much more modern one, uh, along with directions. Although the directions are a bit yellow. Oh, you know what I found in... in that's something I took down to school. I got a piece of cannon wick, so I was doing something diabolical there with the class. I don't remember what. Remember, you can make the, really get the kids' interest by uh, anything that burns or makes a noise. So this one, which is almost new, uh, it's got two bolt holes there, and uh, or bolts, studs, and that's to hold a handle on, and the handle did not come with that, or it was lost. Of course, it came from an auction. Now, this bigger one here, uh, works fine, but notice the corrosion on the reflector, so it just didn't put out a very good beam. Used to take, well, I took that to the high school, so I don't know if I ever use this one or not, but again, you know, there, there's the striker, just like a Zippo lighter, and you put uh, carbide down in there, there's a gasket there, the water goes in the top, and you can adjust the amount of water that drips down into the uh, gas chamber, drop at a time, drip like Chinese water torture, and then the uh, acetylene gas would go out this little orifice right here, come out here, and you would light it. So they're pretty simple. You need to clean these out when you're done. And we destroyed more of them because when we came home from our hike and our cave exploring, of course, you were tired and these just got thrown in the garage. And then when you went to use them a year later, they were totally ruined. And uh, it just turns into a white 
mess like that or worse so <laughs> I'm not the only one that didn't clean it up <laughs> so the first thing I'm going to do here is see if I can get this one to work so I'm going to put some carbide in there and put some water in the top and and uh, give her a try and I you know I thanks uh, thanks Mike Campbell for sending me this so for this video pretty awesome before I added or do add the carbide I just put some water in here just tap water H2O and then uh, moving this back and forth I'm getting absolutely no water dripping out of here so there's a clog in here it definitely wouldn't work if I was trying to light it so let me take the time off camera to see if I can clean that out with a small wire or what I'll probably use is a, a tip cleaner for oxyacetylene torch see you in a few minutes okay it's 15 minutes later and let me try to explain this again because I may have said something incorrectly but I've had it apart now I cleaned the the gunk out of there but again I've got water in in here and when I turn the valve it'll start dripping and then when it drips right out of here it's going to drip into the carbide cause a gas to form acetylene gas and the gas will uh, collect at the top and enter that hole and then come out of the orifice and there's a few parts that I took off let me show you for cleaning this uh, filter material whatever it is almost looks like a sponge and then a washer and then this device and now watch the water drip out as I turn the valve and you can vary the rate of dripping and you would use a slow drip like a Chinese water torture okay let's see if I can get this thing to work there's a small handful of calcium carbide again I don't know how uh, gas tight this washer is that I made let's close it up now I'm going to turn it on which is simply getting the water to drip in there I can smell it oh and it's already getting warm on the bottom quite warm it's cooking no nothing's coming out Boy, is that getting hot. I almost can't touch it. But nothing is coming out of here, so I'm going to have to stop and try to clean that orifice, which I should have done in the first place. And I'm going to have to waste this car by then. Oh, man. I cannot touch it. Chemical reaction. Quite an odor. Not pleasant either. I am now 15 minutes older than I was last time I spoke and I took this apart and I'll, I'll do it again. And you know these things are made so that they can be rebuilt. And I know the level of detail I'm showing it is too much. Some of you love it, some of you hate it, and the insults that I get are tremendous for going into this detail and and I'll just recite a line of poetry as well uh, the thousand insults of Fortunato I had borne what poem did that come from there's your trivia for the day the reflector comes off and you can see how beat up it is and there's another part here but uh, I've already taken out with my little craftsman ignition wrenches the orifice itself where did I put it right here well it was clogged, but uh, the uh, the smallest tip cleaner, 
was way, way too big. I got a complete set of these uh, orifice cleaners, and I believe these are either from uh, oil burners or something, but even the smallest one right there was way too large. So, you know, for 25 years I've had two sets of these uh, little uh, number drills, So, and I always wondered what a number 80 was for. Who could possibly use a number 80? Well, I just used it, finally, by hand though by hand and I cleaned out the orifice. So now we'll see if this blame thing works. I'll put it back together off camera. Thank goodness. Don't show us. All brass. No plastic. And it came apart freely and easily even though this thing is ancient. Okay, I'm going to repeat the whole show. Although I'll try to speed it up a bit with the orifice clean and that gasket seemed to work get a little water and I'll swear I smell a little gas or maybe I'm smelling it coming out here, if that's leaking, I don't know. There she goes, there she goes. A little fireworks, and you know what, today is the 4th of July, 2016, so a little fire is apropos. Now we're not going to get a whole lot of light out of that. We've <laughs> got to turn the light out here. because of the lack of a reflector. And you can change the length of the uh, flame. By the amount of water dripping. Boy, that bottom is getting hot again. And I recall now, as I shake it, you know what, I'm going to add a little more water here. Two clicks. And I don't remember now if there was a, a slight adjustment there on the orifice by turning it. I just don't remember. Too hot to touch. And that's from a chemical reaction, not, not from the flame. Pretty awesome though, huh? And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how a carbide lamp works, also known as a carbide, uh, or I should say, acetylene generator. And you know, another thing we did when we were in those limestone caves when we were boys, I'm a little ashamed to tell you, but we would write our names on the walls with the uh, black, very black carbon that came out that uh, it was easy to write. Uh, <clears throat> and as my mom would say, fools' names and fools' faces are always seen in public places. This is Tubal Kane saying, I hope you liked this video. Be sure and watch the 20 others in this series, What Makes It Work. So long for now.